Welcome once again, everybody, to Blockbuster Mentality. I'm your host, Ben. Been a while, I know. Been a while since we've been uh, recording. Went on vacation for a little bit and just, uh, yeah, just needed a little break from the show, but uh, glad to be back. Had a great time talking today with John Gabris. Uh, he's a comedian uh, from... Uh, and he's good friends with Adam Pally. Uh, they have a new show on True TV called 101 Ways to Party Before You Die. Um, it's on, again, True, True TV. It's a funny show, hilarious show, a couple of buddies drinking, having fun in different locations. Uh, he talks about that. Uh, the movie we talk about is Big Trouble in Little China with Kurt Russell. Um, it's, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it, uh, we get into the details, uh, but it's still fun. Even if you haven't seen it, it'll intrigue you to see it. Uh, and yeah, uh, make sure you're following us on Twitter at Blockbuster Cast. Instagram at Blockbuster Mentality. Uh, go to our website, blockbustermentality.com. That's where you get all the updates on the show and all that fun and uh, if you could please give us a five star review on itunes that helps immensely um but uh here is my fun conversation with the very funny john gabris are you still filming the the party show the uh, 101 ways or is that is there is no that uh, we're done filming we're done with post-production it's like just straight airing i think our fourth episode airs this thursday and then uh, that's ha- that's the halfway mark okay gotcha and then i mean i mean it's it's got to be a nice break i mean that's got to that's got to kill you that uh it's, what you guys do <laughs> it's a it's like literally my own episode of twilight zone or black mirror because it's the best job i've ever had but it's physically destroyed me <laughs> i'm sure I, I, I gotta fight i gotta fight the good fight for like the 10 weeks when i'm not shooting uh and 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 keep the body trying to bounce back you know <laughs> yeah i can imagine i just we just got back from a two-week vacation down in uh south florida and uh you know just drinking two weeks straight i was just like oh <laughs> I, I i came home like excited to give my liver a break and, and yeah and you just need that. like that i i think i need to take a two week long shower where i yes. don't eat or drink at all you know right just like slowly bring my body back to like slowly revitalize and add water back to my system <laughs> right exactly yeah you got to get that hydration in um <laughs> um <laughs> what uh, so yeah i mean explain the show a little i know you've talked your ear off about it but for my listeners you know let them yeah, know sure. what's like how it how did the uh what was the genesis of the show uh again it's called uh 100 and ways to par- 101 yeah, places to party before die uh so me and my co-host another comedian that i've been doing comedy with the early 2000s mid 2000s is adam people know him from like mindy project and happy endings song yep. movies dude rules him and i lo- like longtime friends we've always we've always traveled for work like whether the comedians like touring comedians back in the day or actors now and then we've frequently traveled together and we realize our vibes are very similar we have similar ideas about travel we both are super passionate about it and the more we work together or hung out and when we started to miss each other we were like dude if we could just film us partying like film us hanging out like and then like our managers are very good friends and they are old party animal buddies so they were like we got the idea we found this book we'll buy the right the book was called 101 places to get fucked up before you die and we sort of built out this show idea that was kind of like what is it like for party animals in their late 30s now we're in our 40s but when we were pitching it what's it like to still try because most of my friends in their late 30s early 40s if they can steal a fucking dude's weekend or a friend's weekend or a couple's week, whatever it is the childless even when they bring their kids my 40 year old friends are fucking after it getting blasted chasing the good <laughs> chicken sandwich place like all that shit that w- we do on our travel except the the thing adam and i do that maybe not everyone does is 
are were professionally funny as well. So like, well, yes, well, that yeah, we <laughs> added bonus there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then we add that, and that's authentic to how we are when we travel. Is we're doing bits with each other, doing bits with the waitress, mocking someone else at another table, mocking the food, enjoying the food. Uh, roasting ourselves, roasting each other. So to bring all that energy into a show has been like a dream come true for us. Just getting to be ourselves, yeah. our gluttonous, humorous, <laughs> uh, and and we're both like you know we love each other. We're we're yeah. like, we're like real adult male friends. We have like real love for each other. So hope. Uh, we hope that comes across too. Sure. Like we just we just want to show that it's not all fucking you know it's it's bromance doesn't necessarily mean like giving each other wedgies and shit you know or okay. fucking on each other yeah and stuff. but we Noogie. still can yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. it, it can happen it can happen well <laughs> that's what I, the thrust of it all you know yeah well that's what i lo- like what's so you know endearing about the show is it's not you know just a couple early 20 year olds doing it and just like obnoxious like okay whatever you're going around partying like i like that it's <laughs> you guys <laughs> in your 40s like <laughs> doing this like can we handle this is was there yeah. was there was there a point where you were just like I don't know if I can continue. Like, was there ever there was like due to time constraints and uh, true TV's airing schedule? Like we had to shoot three weeks on one week off two weeks on. So that's five weeks of partying in six weeks. So with only one week off and that week off is just uh, unpacking and doing laundry and then folding laundry and repacking. Like, it's just like so much clothes and shit. So like, so I, that stretch by the end and then the end of my trip, the end, after we wrapped, my wife joined where I was in Hawaii and we were going to have like some time together. Yeah. But I had been so partied and restauranted out. I was like, fuck, yeah. all I want to do is go back to our house, put on the air conditioning, put on Apple TV and not move. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, but you- so during that stretch is when I was like, oh, shit. OK, I need to like go for walks, drink some water, <laughs> exercise. Right. It's a regimen I call the weed water wife because I, I like when I'm like, all right, I've been on alcohol and not sleeping too much. I need like some weed. Some right. water and to hang out with my wife. <laughs> do you ever do you ever feel like you needed a salad? Like I just need a I just need something green in me. Like not not uh, not weed, but you know the <laughs> no. Uh, well, that was something like by by week four of the shoot, Adam and I had finally learned that oh, when we're not on camera, we should be healthier. Right, like we yeah. were still eating like burger lunches and shit, and, like wings and shit. And we were like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. We get to eat for fun paid for by other people right. off camera. And so then we start like our our tender greens and sweet greens postmates were through the roof in every city. We were like <laughs> salad lunch. It's like, yes, please. It's like skip breakfast. Just drink uh, black. Coffee. Right. It's like, yes. It's like uh, everyone's going out for uh, pizza after drinks. It's like I am going home to eat almonds and drink water yes you need to, yeah you need to come back hard <laughs> exactly and did uh adam does he have kids and you don't or he, do yeah you i have no kids he has yeah. three kids so like uh, he's got to wake up early and facetime them and shit yeah. like, none of the stuff i even have to do <laughs> but and like i go home to my 40 year old my my wife who's 40 and like my dog and we're just and an, he's a senior dog and we're like we lay low. He's right. got to go home and fucking go to drive to camp, pick up at school and shit. I, I'm like, thank yeah. God I get that rest. Yeah, that's rough. That is rough. Yeah, I, um, yeah. We, I, we, because we, yeah, the vacation we just went on was with the kids, and yeah, I'm looking. We go on a cruise on uh, in December without them. So looking oh, forward to yeah. that one. I mean, it was yeah. great with the kids. You know, they're a blessing. They're a blessing. But you know, <laughs> well, I think more people just need to like do both. Like that's yes, all. Exactly. It's like, just remind yes. for your for you are and your partner's sanity it's like yes <laughs> let's just do two nights without the kids like yeah. and we're actually on vacation and like we are yes. not catering to them like yeah i think hey, you deserve that a hundred percent a hundred percent um and i'm sure you've gotten this question a zillion times but uh what was your favorite place during well, the go, show going into it i assumed maui was going to be my favorite place because i had been there a few times and it re- and it was like it didn't I mean, it it didn't surprise me because I I knew so like uh, Maui was a, a great fuck, but I had never been to Moab, Utah or even heard of it. So after going to that, that's the site I'd like the spot I'd. 
like to most revisit. Yeah. I have been to San Juan, Puerto Rico before, and I'd love to go with my wife on like a full like excuse me, grown ups vacation there because the food and party scene was so dope. And, you know, it's it's a giant island full of uh, nice people. So that's that's always appealing. Right. But Moab, Utah, I had never been up to never heard of is not really my vibe. And I can't wait to go back. Wow. Yeah. That's like the last place you would think like, oh, we're going. To, why are we picking this place? But obviously it has has a reason, you know, it's uh, it's usually those places that, yeah, you don't expect. I mean, it's kind of like movies. Like if, if I'm going in with low ex- expectations, like that's usually the movies I like and yeah, vice I, versa. You know, it's like <laughs> it's it's definitely psychological. I think it's just you just are you just go on for the ride. I didn't expect much. And then it's like, wow, I was blown away. So that's- <laughs> yeah, that's so yeah, exactly. And then it's also kind of like. Uh, I'm at this new phase of my life where I'm getting more into the outdoorsy type shit that I wasn't okay. into before. So yeah. like Moab has that too, where I'm like, shit, maybe that's something I do for like my 45th birthday is like glamp out in Moab or like, uh, you know, do a big mountain bike ride or something dumb, Sh- some dumb old man activity shit like that. Yeah. Cause I, I saw, I mean, I, I've been burned a few times by, uh, going off wikipedia for guests or whatever uh, are, are you uh, were you from new york originally was yeah, that I'm, uh, yeah i'm from long island new york a okay little, okay a little offshoot of the the state the little uh island that goes on yep the oh there you, there you go there you go nice i uh yeah because yeah i never i always get but like i i think i talked to airy spears once and i was like you're a you're you're from chicago right he's like no i'm from new york it's like oh okay well <laughs> that's what I, what I get what i get what i get for trust in the internet you know moving on uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um but yeah no that's that's great and that's uh, yeah i mean to be able to do it with a, a you know when your best friends and yeah to do all that it that's just feels just, so normal you know what yeah I mean? like it just feels and the crew is great these guys like these people are pros they know what they're doing and it's such a fun see like set up and it's just like you know we're the bosses too and and we're not i'm not always like in a high status position but like we forget it and then you're like half in the bag after dinner and you're like talking to the showrunner shout out michael rucker and you're like <laughs> Am I? Was that funny? And he's like, uh, "You're okay, man. Like, yeah, guys, relax. We're like, people hate us, right? It's like, no, you guys are just drunk and sad. Like, let's right. just get you home. It's gonna be okay." <laughs> Yep, all those yeah, the other drunken tears, you know, you gotta, yeah. you know, <laughs> you gotta deal with gotta, them. <laughs> gotta get past it, but no, that's that's great. And you guys met through, I think, you did, through comedy. Is that how you met? Yeah, we met we uh, early on in, at UCB in our uh, early twenties after college. Like I would say, like oh four, oh five. We got put on an th- uh, improv team together oh. back in the day. It was kind of random, and then we hit it off as uh, we bonded over the fact that both of we were we're in, we were in long term relationships already. We've now since married those same two women. So we've always bonded over our monogamy. And look when all at of our you. young friends are you know dating, and we're like. No, I have a yeah. serious girlfriend who doesn't want to come watch me do improv. It's like, hey, same here. Maybe we should get dinner with them sometime or whatever. Right. There you go. That's awesome. Um, the um, uh, What was I going to say? I edit. Uh, I say I edit, but then I don't. Um, but Because uh, <laughs> I, um, I hate it. It's so time consuming. And I'm just like, eh, whatever. Let's just keep it organic. You know, whatever. Um, but uh, I... I your um, publicist, uh, you know, came to us with you because uh, apparently you're a, you're a huge movie guy. She was so impressed just how knowledgeable you were with it, and I was like, "Wow, perfect fit. Let's do it." Yeah, um, it's uh, it, I um, you I know, host I, two movie podcasts in wow. addition to a non movie podcast. That's how you know I'm passionate about movies. That man. Ends. I've been watching uh, movies every day since I was a little kid. I can't get enough of the screen, video games, TV, and movies. It all works on me. I love it all. And I'm always down to talk about movies. So Yeah, they- I love it. That's... When it was like, do you want to do this Strangers podcast? I was like, uh, what is it? No, like talking about movies. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll talk to a, <laughs> any fucking any old <laughs> asshole about Big Trouble in Little China. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> well, that 
that leads to to my question uh first of all so yeah we have people on who are you know in familiar with the industry and you know are in show business have them on to get their perspective on film so why uh why did you choose big trouble in little china to uh speak about okay well two things like usually with a movie podcast that asked me to pick a movie uh, to talk about, I pick something I haven't seen yet to like ins- force myself to find down and watch in blank. But this was uh, t- your favorite movie. And at the time, I was also like a little too busy to like fully watch a whole because I was just going to straight up be like, well, here's a movie I know I love. I haven't watched in 15 years. I'll just say it's my favorite movie so I can rewatch it. But then I was panicking that I wouldn't be able to rewatch it. And uh, so I just picked a movie that I is my favorite movie okay yeah and i know it by heart so i didn't wouldn't and like and that's big trouble on little china and like uh kurt russell john carpenter fucking yeah. everything uh, uh kim cattrall two right. girls with green eyes uh david uh hong the uh, <laughs> the um just got a star on the walk of fame this is like this movie fucking meant so much to me as a kid and it means still so much. Like I've never, I don't have anything in my life that I liked this much when, for one reason, when I was a kid and the, even more as an adult for like, I grew up with the movie in a way where I like found a new way to appreciate it. Like every 10 years. And I'm like just relishing in it constantly. It, it's, it's everything I want in a movie. It's got a f- like beautiful people, great action, some weird fantasy element right yeah it's got it's got like everything and then it's also so fucking funny yeah it's and, it's funny it's yeah tongue in cheek and yeah it, it doesn't ever take itself seriously which i love like in it's um but I, to your point about yeah I, I you like to pick a movie that you haven't seen i, I love when guests pick a movie i haven't seen because it's like oh sweet a new movie and this honestly i i've seen bits and pieces of it but to do research for the show i watched it i mean i think for the first time all the way through so this is my first oh see now <laughs> now i'm even happier with my choice because it got one person to watch the whole yes movie. So like, yeah I'm, I'm, and then hopefully some of your listeners have no. It's really something oh, weirdly special. Okay. Oh, you sorry, froze am I a little for... frozen? Yeah, you know, you're good now. Yep. Uh, it's really something uh, special if you've never seen it. It really is sneaky in how much wild shit is going on. In right. It. It's like <laughs> it's dressed up like a random like 80s, 90s, like mid-budget action sure. comedy thriller thing. But then there's just so many elements at play and maybe my favorite thing and i'm curious about you watching it for the first time that fact that kurt russell is the star of the movie but he's not the protagonist yeah and that's been uh i know it's been uh you know doing research like it seems like it's been like a not an argument but like a debate on whether is he the is he the protagonist or is he a sidekick and yeah yeah, i think a lot of people believe he's the sidekick to his buddy wang and i think i think he like never knows what's going like there's a super cut on YouTube of Kurt of Jack Burton just going, huh? And like being confused. <laughs> there's not a ca- what in the hell is a low pan? What he says, <laughs> what is that? Or what is the last thing right. someone said? Or what are you talking about? Or huh? Yeah. So many times in that movie. And he's it's like a weird commentary on America in a way, too, because it's like all these hardworking Asian people and women getting everything done. And then there's like a confused white man who's just kind of storms in and is like, huh? And he's like, yeah, yes, and feels like he's the hero. He's like, you know, he goes right and che- like, well, <laughs> checks in the mail, pal, he like narrates his own life. And <laughs> yeah. It's just like. It's a very fun look at America where it's like yeah, he's getting all the credit for this. And it's like, right. and also the place that's being ravaged is little China. You know, it's like, it, it's like weirdly imperialistic that he shows up spraying machine guns and stuff so, like gets yeah. involved in something that has nothing to do with him and then doesn't even really <laughs> help over the course of the movie. It's well, it, fucking rules. Yeah, definitely. And y- y- like you said, it is, it is a, a, you know, it does speak on uh, America and just how little I think uh, a lot of us know about, you know, 
these other cultures and right, you know right. what's what's going on i mean hopefully that you know we there's not really this black magic that's going on in places but you know it does speak on that <laughs> that aspect <laughs> yeah, um and it's sure. I, I i love how quick paced it is too because yeah you have him you know going uh you know driving and doing yeah the whole yeah check is check or cash in my check line all that yeah um going through and then he's gambling and then all of a sudden they're at an airport and just kidnaps it, it happening cruises. and it's just yeah. like <laughs> it's kind of like pulpy in like an adventure novel kind of way in that like uh jack burton's like immediately involved immediately and like it's about just like money wang owes him from a bet is like the reason he's all the way like by the end he's fighting like in a spiritual way War to save the earth and it's right like, and that all stemmed from like he owed me like a thousand dollars or yeah, whatever all yeah. of this all yeah. of this like he's he's trying to get out of town but wang won't pay him his money and then yeah. it's just it's all, all snowballs reflexes. he's like oh now i gotta save now i gotta save san francisco who's gracie <laughs> law i'm gracie law okay <laughs> like i i I love you. I didn't even think about that. The pacing of the movie is very yeah. modern in how fast it moves. It's like, here, here's what we're doing, and now we're there. Egg is leading a, a group of people into the belly of the beast, and we're there. Now we're trying to rescue women, and we're rescuing them, and now we're caught again. Like they right. just like <laughs> keep powering through in such a way. That yeah, and they they keep sneaking in this little exposition and stuff about what this what is actually going on in the grand scheme of things, and it's like. If if you it definitely takes multiple views to to catch it because I I watched it you know a couple of weeks ago had to cancel and then today I refreshed my memory by just kind of skimming through it and I was noticing like oh okay now I get that part and <laughs> right yeah there's it it works on a it's just like one of those movies where there's just more going on than there needs to be in a good way where you're like <laughs> yeah you're like this movie doesn't even need this many details like the big street fight like early on when they're stuck in the car and they and like he pulls out his knife and then there's like a huge street fight in between the yellow bandana guys and the red bandana guys and, right, he's conf yep. and he's confused the whole time and then when it ends there's like low pan and he's like an energy yep. being and it's like <laughs> that we're 15 minutes into the movie the movie opens with egg in an interview and that ends with the cold open of the movie ends with uh egg going chinese black magic as lightning appears between his hands yes and you're like <laughs> okay this is at minute this is it's 45 seconds into the movie and we've got like emperor palpatine lightning in inside right. like a yeah. regular office so where the fuck does this movie go and this movie takes you on the yeah. ride well, it's funny because, yeah, you have that and then it meshes with the silly like John Wayne type talking that uh, Kurt Russell's doing in the truck. Right, and it's just yeah. like, OK, what are we in for at this point? And then like, we are <laughs> those two worlds literally colliding. And then yes. we haven't even touched on. I've, I've mentioned Lopan a few times, but his crew is the three storms. These yep. three <laughs> insane, badass martial <laughs> artists with super specific powers that don't seem to really fit them in the long run but yeah <laughs> so great fucking stunty fun shit to watch with the guy who can inflate himself like well apparently just... i know oh my god yeah I, I, we're definitely gonna get to that um thing um the um well and even one of the guys is wearing you know that big i just call it a sombrero but <laughs> that right, big yeah. thing apparently like that the, the sun, apparently the that was inspiration for the character in uh mortal Kombat. For like Raiden, the, for the, yeah Cause, yes cause he, he right <laughs> he literally rides down on uh he like repels down on a lightning bolt which is pretty awesome <laughs> yes absolutely now were you um into uh like or and are you into like Asian mo culture movies with like Kung Fu and stuff. Typically. I was growing up because like I watched a lot of martial arts movies and did martial arts. I didn't, I wasn't like, you know, I was like 80s white kid familiar with Asian culture. Now I'm right. like a 40 year old man who's lived in multiple major um, metropolitans and understand that Asian culture is not what I was seeing on, yeah. on TV. <laughs> uh, and that that Steven Seagal is not Asian at all. Right. And like, uh, <laughs> right. So yeah, you like, like, uh, but I was always I was always into uh, the stuff stuff that was magical or mystical. And unfortunately, in the 80s and 90s, Asian culture was, you know, and Native American culture and, and Cajun culture all kind of got that like it's magic over there, which right. we let which is a weird form of racism in some capacity. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at the same time, I think 
like I, I I was this movie it was made for me in between my love of Kurt Russell and my love of martial arts. It's like it's the s- s- iconic 90s action hero like I'll save the day energy undercut by the vibes like of, of making fun of the guy and then sure. added a plethora of awesome martial arts and magic stunts and shit. So the movie is just like I, you know, I grew up watching all those, like the Van Damme, uh, all those Marshall Bruce Lee was my favorite, like all that shit I loved. And then this movie kind of brought it in and also like interacted with it in a way that I was not expecting as a kid. And now as a grown up, it's like to pull this genre off, they're like doing so much shit. No, absolutely. Yeah. Are, are you a John Com- uh, John Carpenter guy? A big, big Carpenter fan, like didn't know I was a big Carpenter fan until I like was in my 20s and understood like who directed what. But I grew up, I loved Halloween and I fucking loved Big Trouble in Little China. And two two of the things I loved about those movies was their scores. And he also yes. does the scores for his movies. Uh, big Trouble in Little China has a great fucking score. Yeah. Fog, great fucking score. Great movie. He, he just makes he made a lot of bangers early on in his career. And I'm, I'm a big fan of his music and his fucking movie. So, yeah, no, the score is definitely. Yeah. I and mean, it's got that like classic now, 80s vibe to now, it. And now, yeah, <laughs> brilliant. I was um I'm again I'm I'm fairly new to this movie so like I was super confused at first like uh the way they were portraying Wang when they're like gambling like I thought for sure like Wang was like a bad guy and was like going to bring you know Jack to a place you know for the money but really it was just him setting him up or something right like, right right it seemed it that like, way and I was like what because <laughs> that's how movies like were destined because they're competing against each other so you think you honestly think when you if you're like are using modern like movie language you think that we're just going to see Kurt Russell be a hero in this moment and then leave this place and be some and never interact with this person again because it's like the cold open of the movie where you just right. see oh this is our hero being a badass and then our hero joins the actual plot of the movie after this but yeah. no this is like the beginning of it all and the dumb uh barely and arguably good reason to get him to f- chase them the whole time to follow the story the whole time right right and that yeah and that definitely yeah he like we said before, he's definitely, you know, the sidekick. He's just doing, like, he's just following along with everyone. And he's kind of, he's kind of an idiot in a way. Like, he's, oh, he's, he's not... a major uninformed idiot. He's, yeah, <laughs> he, he, he is arguably the eye candy of the movie. Like, the way there's, there's an, a case to be made. That it's sort of undercutting the trope of like the damsel in distress. Right. We have like this beautiful man, Kurt Russell, whose hair always looks amazing, like a female character in an 80s or 90s movie. It's like she's been underwater and fighting. Like, why is her hair not like her hair doesn't look messed at all? And he does not really help at all, but (laughs) everyone is kind of intrigued by him and he's like a linchpin for the story for some reason. So he's arguably our like our our damsel in distress that a case and like i find that to be a very fun look at the movie as well where you're well, like oh he like he like legit needs to be rescued twice <laughs> and he's our yeah. hero <laughs> well even the uh the climax like he's really not part of that big battle like he shoots like the ceiling and it falls on him and he passes out so yeah, and he accidentally just... <laughs> kills the guy in the armor with his knife boot like like he doesn't get yes. a chance to do a lot yeah <laughs> right <laughs> definitely um well, uh let's see i got my notes here uh, do, 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 do. uh whatever happened to so uh, that, that's one thing i was a little confused about so um Kim Cattrall was meeting her friend at the airport and they were trying to kidnap her, but they ended up ki- kidnapping Wang's fiance instead. I think Wang's fiance is who she was going to meet because that Wang's fiance had a story like she's the other girl. Okay. And so then they end up getting two girls with green eyes for the price of one. And they, need, right. they only yeah. need the Asian girl with green eyes who's Wang's fiance and, and Gracie Law's friend or... Gracie Law is going to tell a story about her. I forget what the exact dynamic yeah. is, but I do think that's the same person. So the two of them, like, uh, and then so they Lopan needs them both for whatever immortality spell or whatever the fuck he's doing for himself. Yeah. Well, Gracie, yeah, the the, the woman she's originally there to meet. Do we ever see that woman again? It's just... 
Oh yeah, no, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, no. I think it's we, just it's just oh, she's gone. All yeah. right, <laughs> we figured that out. <laughs> just let's not write her back in. Um, and uh, yeah, I just uh, I love when he comes to the brothel and uh, <laughs> it's raining cats and dogs out there. And that he's little the, the uh, yeah, the dorky glasses. version of himself. <laughs> another another great. Uh, uh, moment I like too is when he's going undercover as like the telephone repairman and he just holds up a telephone with a wire dangling it's from like, it like that's at all a tool they would use he's like yeah well gotta go and he's like over talking like super confident it's really funny oh, oh I love a good night shift and he's like walking in yeah has a, has a telephone because he's a telephone repairman so naturally he's gonna have a telephone on him that's a great Burton moment another great uh, Burton moment is when uh, egg, egg. There's like a weird sea monster underneath the uh, streets, and Egg Shen throws like some of his uh, magic bombs at it, and it like, and he goes, "We won't be seeing that again." And the look on Kurt Russell's face, on Jack Bird's face, is like, "What in the fuck have I gotten myself into?" <laughs> Definitely, uh, I I like the uh, the lore behind it. I, I, one thing I wish I wish they. Again, upon rewatch, they you know you can understand it a little more. But I wish they expanded maybe a l- tiny bit on you know what was going on with Lopan. But I guess with a '80s movie that's an hour and a half, you know you just want it to move along. You don't yeah. want it to be that deep. But that's just my selfish want. Wanting is like more of that lore. Like all right, what really happened? Yeah, but- there's some there's some <laughs> comics that take place in in the world too now that I've gotten popular. I wonder if they expand. See. I I get that and for me I just love how rich it seemed. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like we only see a glimpse of what what is really going on underground in little China and I'm so ex- but you're right there's there's way more and I I'm very curious about how long Lo Pan has been running his gangs and all that but it's also fun that it feels super rich and barely touched upon like there's something right. about that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And then we touched on uh, the the one dude who can expand himself. You know, like he gets out of like uh, Jack's grip by expanding himself. But yeah, he the... just <laughs> can inflate himself yeah. in some insane way. And then there's the uh, ride the lightning guy. And then there's the dude who can kind of like throw little metal ball like he has like telekinesis more yeah like, yeah shit. exactly yeah yeah <laughs> but I, I just love again back to the beginning i just love how they just happen upon this alley because they're chasing down and it's uh i didn't realize the first time but watching it today it's a funeral procession yeah and it's <laughs> they're basically attacking that um but uh and then yeah he's all concerned about his truck and you know it's that's all that's all he wants but then yeah he just keeps getting thrown thrown into these situations um the uh yeah low pan i love the makeup design on him when he's like that old old man like that's like oh yeah and he's got super creepy he's kind of goofy with his like weird skin yes (laughs) <laughs> when he like kind of mocks, uh, he makes fun yeah. of uh, Jack Burton is really yep. fucking great too. Uh, and then at one point, uh, don't they get like stuck in wheelchairs? And uh, uh, yeah, he he's yeah. Stu- he's in a wheelchair. He escapes, but then he rolls backwards all the way down until he's dangling over. And like this is what I like about the movie too. Like the setting is like san francisco and then they go underground yeah. and it's in a, a fully fantastical world exists underneath the ground there's like temples there's giant <laughs> wells there's fighting pits there's monsters there's full wars being waged and no one knows about them it's such a fun uh, you know it's such a weird choice well like uh i think it was wang's uncle says at the beginning china is here China is here, and Jack's like, "What? What? What the hell are you talking about?" <laughs> Just like, give me my. Truck I think that will that'll eventually make sense to me. Oh no, the movie ended, and it still doesn't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's funny because I mean, I was totally getting John Wayne vibes, and apparently Kurt Russell did uh, emulate uh, Kurt or um, John Wayne for this. He was purposely oh, kind of sure. talking he, that he, way. It's like, he does a little bit of he's like yeah, all but, right yeah when the, when the devil comes and gr- says rent pal you say checks in the you know like he checks in the classic yeah. like <laughs> and that's all doing it fuck he's <laughs> yeah <laughs> how I, I mean it's like jack bird says what the <laughs> <laughs> exactly i i 
nothing against Wang, but I mean, how, how does he he pull a girl like uh, Mao Mao Yin? You know, I mean, that's. Uh, <laughs> I think I think you see how because he he's willing to yeah. fucking fight yeah. his way down like yeah that, he's the hero yeah that translates well for him I'm assuming yeah. yeah okay okay and he probably has a great personality you know uh, <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> he's very he's very cute very sweet yeah yeah exactly so you know um but yeah I, it's uh yeah a very uh entertaining movie it's non-stop you don't get bored at all like you know it's uh yeah it's just yeah, I'm so glad you 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 picked it. What what what, what kind of are you into newer movies now? Like, are you liking what's been coming out? Like, are you uh, more of an action I, guy? Or I love I love uh you know I love to see all the new big blockbuster movies. I have absolute like franchise fatigue. Like, I don't I like to see some more standalone movies. Some it's yes, just like I just don't want to have to like every movie I'm seeing. I also have to like buy into something way more than that. You know what I mean? Like I just, no. Oh, definitely. I just like so like for me, I'm stoked to see like uh like I really enjoyed Vengeance, BJ Novak's movie. I just saw that this I, I need to see that. Yeah, that looks it, awesome. It was truly enjoyable. It was like very different and surprised me. I'm I, I a lot of like Everything Everywhere All at Once, Top Gun Maverick. Those yeah. are a couple of my favorite movies of the year. I couldn't believe um, how much I like Top Gun Maverick. That was just <laughs> It was made for me and I just came in and I and it fucking achieved <laughs> I wanted it to achieve. It just it, worked on me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It uh, the the weight because they kept pushing it back, push, pushing it back. Like yeah, and I just release. could not be more excited. I was like, please give it <laughs> I to know. us, please. Yeah, <laughs> and they delivered. They a hundred percent delivered. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, because the Marvel, yeah, the Marvel stuff. I don't know if you're into that, but yeah, that just it's just getting at this point. It's just like <sighs> once once the whole Thanos stuff happened, I'm like, all right. That was the end of that chapter, and I'm kind of almost done. I'm still hanging on a little, but I don't know. We'll, yeah, we'll see I, what happens. Yeah, I'm a little tired. <laughs> I'm a little tired of all things Marvel and Star Wars, but uh, yeah, I'll still s probably see every single fucking thing they put out. And, exactly, uh, yeah, exactly. And, uh, <laughs> and they it, know it, that, and it's this weird <laughs> relationship I have with them where. I'm just dealing with the fact that they know I'm a pig for fucking content. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank are you, you uh, Disney. <laughs> thanks. Appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, are you into any of the, the um, like art house films, like in the, with like the Oscar films or anything like that? Or yeah, I try to watch all the uh, yeah. nominated for best picture movies. Of course. Uh, yeah. My favorite, one of my favorite movies of last year. I don't think I could call it my favorite, but it's definitely top three was drive my car, which is like a, three plus hour uh you know japanese language a foreign language film and it was like right uh, so I, I i'll watch them all i'm curious you know yeah I mean? that's i watch bad i watch a lot of b action movies on netflix like foreign action movies and foreign thrillers i uh i watch a lot because I, I i can do subtitles pretty well when i'm stoned yeah. uh it actually helps me pay attention because I, I i'm so hooked on story that i won't look at my phone but if it's an Eng if it's in english i may start looking at my phone and right because you miss can a hear bunch it of shit and... when i'm super yeah exactly so yeah you can pay like, attention more almost when there's yeah, subtitles yeah it's, i dive yeah. in on the subs so i watch a lot of foreign action movies a lot of foreign thrillers i am constantly checking boxes for movies i haven't seen that i've heard of uh, I watch a movie every week for my podcast, Action Boys, which are all like classic action movies from before, from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Okay. Um, I'm watching a new movie every week for my podcast, The Movie Buff, that I do on Spotify Live every night, doing a new episode. So I got to see a new movie that weekend. And then, like, I'm always doing another podcast where I got. So I'm constantly fucking yeah. consuming all <laughs> types of movies. And I am of the mindset that, like, I like to watch movies. So if it's a bad yeah. movie, I'm still happy to have watched a movie rather than. Well, know, yeah, because I mean, I, or <laughs> even the bad, or even the bad ones, I like to break down and, you know, talk about like, or you what find something better. Cool in it. You're like, yeah. oh, that's a great performance by this one person. Or Definitely. Like, Oh shit! They made eight of these movies. Now I gotta watch all of the, you know, Boyaka movies or whatever. Right, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, that's how I feel. Yeah, I love when someone picks something that I haven't seen again because I get to watch another movie. And yeah, yeah. I've been a guest a, a few times on other podcasts where it's like, all right, sweet. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm glad to talk to a fellow movie guy. Um, 
what uh so yeah Des, just wrapping up here what um uh your podcast when do they release every week every what when they release and your uh when when does the show uh release i know what days every, does it release every thursday say. night at 10 30 on true tv uh you could watch episodes on true tv.com with a cable login if you don't have a cable login which a lot of modern people don't these days um you can watch the first episode on youtube uh, maybe we'll put more on. I don't know if we can get them to do that, but you can also buy episodes wherever you buy VOD stuff like Amazon or Apple or something like that. You can yeah. straight up buy a season. I think it's like under $20 too. So like if, if you, if you're dying to watch a travel show and don't have cable, there's your move or use your parents login uh, and check it out wherever you watch. Uh, we got a few episodes out so far. I'm very proud of the show. I think if you like travel shows, which yeah. is a low bar, I like bad travel shows. So this is a, a, a decent <laughs> travel show with comedy. So if you like it at all, you're in. Like if that's yeah. any, at all in your warehouse, you're set. That's what's up. Uh, and then uh, any other projects coming up that uh, you can speak about? I got nothing on the docket that I, uh, you know, no, no teasers, nothing exciting here, but, um, hopefully I'll be, uh, traveling again soon. Um, and as always follow me at Gabrus on all social media for any of the news you might want to hear about what I got going on. There and we go. And also if you don't want to hear, cause I barely give a fuck what I'm doing. <laughs> so I understand well, if you don't. <laughs> yeah, love it. Um, yeah, I know you got to go. And then, yeah, so pre really appreciate you coming on, my man. You're welcome back anytime. Would love to talk more movies with you. Um, yeah, Thanks and, for having me, Mr. C Cord. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I love it. It's, it makes me I feel a certain it, type of way. <laughs> but um, all right, man. Well, yeah, again, thank you so much uh, for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me, bud. Uh, talk soon. What in the hell? There you have it, folks. John Gabris, Big Trouble in Little China. Great conversation. Cool guy. Glad he was uh, able to come on and uh, hopefully ho hopefully he'll come on again, talk another movie. Uh, it was great. Uh, great speaking with that dude. Uh, again, follow us on Twitter at BlockbusterCast, Instagram, Blockbuster Mentality, uh, BlockbusterMentality.com, and five-star review on iTunes. That would be great. But uh, yeah, we've got uh, more uh, exciting guests coming up. Um and uh you know we'll we'll release episodes when we when we release them uh let us know if it's uh too little we're gonna try our best to to keep this thing going keep it rolling keep the guests coming sometimes it gets a little discouraging you know emailing these publicists and it's like come on someone give me a yes give me a yes but i understand people are busy and sometimes they just don't want to do their homework and watch a movie to come on the show which is fine too i don't blame them but anyway all right folks well that is it for me for john i'm ben and as always grab some popcorn grab some snacks we'll catch you guys at the movies 